Welcome back. Tonight we devote part two of our programme to Dundee United, who on Wednesday night take on the mighty Barcelona of Spain in the quarter-finals of the UEFA Cup. We talk to the men who have helped take the Tannadice club literally from rags to riches, look back with manager Jim McLean on his triumphs and disappointments, and hear some of the star players' views on the club's success and on that clash with Barcelona. Dundee United are the last British survivors in Europe, and the build-up to Wednesday night will be grabbing the headlines all over the continent. Yet less than 30 years ago, it was a different story, because Dundee United were virtually unknown outside of Scotland. Just another little team going from season to season, scrambling for survival and living in the shadow of their illustrious neighbours, Dundee. The bank overs after four and a half thousand and outstanding bills of over two thousand pounds and nothing on the field. So how did you overcome those problems? Well, uh, the first thing was to start to pools and all credit to the late Ernest Robertson for that. He put up the money for the inauguration, inauguration and sent one of his staff down to Nottingham to learn the ropes. And it was only then we began to make money. A far cry from the modern-day Dundee United who can look forward to a bumper payday against Barcelona and look back on two League Cup wins and a Premier League championship. The transformation came at the start of the 1960s when the club returned to the First Division for the first time in 28 years. Oh, it made a terrific difference because we were building up a nucleus, a nucleus of support before that, but uh, after that the support uh, increased quite a bit, but still not as much as we would have liked. And the stand was built from the Ron Yeats transfer fee to Liverpool, and the covering opposite the stand was built uh, part of the Raymond Stewart uh, transfer fee to West Ham. It was under the guidance of Jerry Kerr that United established themselves in the first division. And the arrival of Scandinavians Orion Persson, Finn Dossing, Leonard Wing, Mogens Berg and Finn Seaman made the Tannadice Terrors a team to be reckoned with. A point driven home when they stepped into the European arena for the very first time in 1966. Their opponents were the famous Barcelona of Spain. The result, now legend, 4-1 in aggregate to Dundee United, who are still the only British club to win a Euro tie on Spanish soil. Well, it put us on the map, as far as football was concerned. And I, I may say that I never realised at the time just how important that one in Barcelona was to Dundee United. And when I think it really hit me was we were coming back and in the airport, one of the airports where teams were changing about in the, in the uh, we met the Kilmarnock party. You know, they were, they were going to wait to play somebody and they come back and they were, you know, fully congratulating them. And I says, my God, this must have been some result. <laughs> Jerry Kerr went on to become one of Scotland's longest serving managers with 12 years at Tannadice. When he stepped down in 1971, the man appointed to take the reins was Jim McLean, the coach of near neighbours Dundee. And so began the most illustrious spell in the club's history. We always wanted to be a big club. There's a difference between wanting to be a club and being a big club. But uh, I remember Jim McLean's first request. He asked for the stopwatch. And uh, he can get players fit like nobody else. I mean, he's, he has signed recognised players and described them as totally unfit. And there's a, an amazing transformation in a few weeks. What do you think the magic is that he's got? He's a brilliant coach. He's got an eye for a player. And he's a very strict disciplinarian. Very strict indeed. The first hint of what lay ahead came in 1974, with the club's first Scottish Cup final since 1940. It ended in a 3-0 defeat at the hands of Celtic, but took United back into Europe the following season, where they've become almost permanent fixtures. However, it took another five years before they enjoyed the real taste of success with their first ever major trophy. That was the League Cup, when after a draw with Aberdeen in the final at Hamden, they met the Dons in a replay at Dens Park and triumphed in great style. 
A Willie Pettigrew goal early in the first half set them on the road to victory. And a further goal from the ex-Motherwell striker and a fine solo effort from Paul Sturrock set the victory celebrations going for the first time in 70 years. The following year, Dundee United let it be known there were no one-season wonders. With a repeat of the League Cup win, and again, Dens Park proved a happy hunting ground. That's Paul Sturrock advancing to the box. The Sturrock can turn, there it is, a chance for Dodds! That's it, the opening goal, David Dodds! Now Payne with the corner kick. Higgins had it off the bar! The ball's in the net! Paul Sturrock scores the second goal for United! There's Payne with the corner. Hegarty's there again. That's it. Sturrock does it again. By this time, the Tangerines had developed a style of play that was eminently suited to European football, a point clearly illustrated when they reached their first UEFA Cup quarter-final. In the early stages of that 1981 campaign, they were still being underrated, and French side Monaco paid the price for treating them far too lightly. Instead of adopting the accepted European defensive pose, Dundee United took the game to a team ranked in the top four in the French league, much to their surprise. In no time at all, the Tannadice team were three goals up, with Billy Kirkwood, Davy Dodds, and the Eamon Bannon penalty doing the damage. And United didn't rest on their laurels. They continued to turn on the magic and by the end of the game had beaten the Monaco keeper five times with further goals from Dodds and Bannon. Needless to say, that made the second leg at Tannadice a mere formality. Although beaten in the quarter-finals by Dardniki Nish, United now had a team ready for an assault in the Premier League Championship and 82-83 was to be their year. Played in by Milne. Park is back, helping out in defence. There's Neri. And no mistake that time. And Sturrock bumped heavily from behind by Clark. Quick, he kicked to Milne. He could boot himself now with his pace. Oh, great play from Milne. Well, that's one to save him. Only to take him by Sturrock. And here's Milne away again. Dodds. take it, lighting it in, off the post, and Dodds completes the task, there's David Dodds, Neri coming through, great chance for United, brilliantly finished by David Neri, here's Neri, now Sturrock, Milne coming inside McKimmy, Dodds to the left, Bannon with the throw. Start up the target, leaving it to Neri. Neri goes down, the penalty is given. Here's Bannon. He saved it the first time, but Bannon makes it on the rebound. Dens Park again, the scene of great United celebrations. Since then, there's been the disappointment of failing to win the Scottish Cup and of losing to Roma in the semi-final of the European Cup. But for a provincial team, Dundee United's success has been remarkable. They've managed to keep together most of their top stars. In the past ten years, seven have won full international honours. And at the World Cup finals in Mexico last year, the Tannadice club had no fewer than five players in the Scottish squad. So what's been the secret of their success? Obviously, um, you put it down to the tactical awareness of the manager. You know, to, he's been different class uh, regarding getting players to the club, getting the right type of blend and, and getting a good bunch of boys together. And, and over the years, we've produced a good... Basically, I think it's uh, a lot of organisation, good organisation from the manager, a uh, couple of good players and just a lot of hard work. What do you think's the manager's magical touch? Well, he can def definitely uh, gets the best out of you by, you know, his means of motivation. Definitely pushes you very hard. He can make a decision so as the play is happening and do things that will 
confuse the opposition or change us about a little bit and that's his strength, one of his strengths and uh, it's worked well over the years. Um, we tend to play a system which, which suits uh, European football as well. Uh, a lot of passing involved and uh, it's been successful for us. What do you think is the special magic of Jim McLean? Um, uh, I think he's a very honest man. I think that's the first thing that you notice about him, you know. Uh, and he can be a wee bit uh, riotous at, at times, you know, he can get a wee bit angry. I think he also, you know, that is important that he makes sure that he's got that honesty, but that uh, stubborn attitude as well, which kind of G's the players up. Dundee United is Jim McLean, really, or Jim McLean is Dundee United. He brought the club from no player to where it is today. And it's shrewd tactics, spending, uh, you name it, Jim McLean's done it. And I think the players appreciate it what he's done for a club and I really respect him uh, and he's coaching, he's sitting to none as a coach. The success that we have had is most certainly started uh, with the board and the directors of Dundee United and as I said earlier in particular uh, George Fox and uh, Johnson Grant in the time I've been there they rightly have had the major say in the club because they are the right people to have that say. Uh, I think the football side has been completely left to me and I don't mean to be boastful but uh, I'm very pleased uh, as long as the players are not watching this programme I'm very pleased with uh, what's been achieved by uh, myself and in particular my staff who uh, the scouts have had over the years have done a tremendous job for us in recent year years as the job has got far too big for me and as much as when I went there we had only two S forms and it was all older players and my job as a coach and manager was uh, I had plenty of time for the two S forms, but uh, we have now something like about almost 20 teenagers on the staff. And uh, as a result, we've needed far more staff on the coaching side. And in recent years, Walter Smith and uh, now Gordon Wallace uh, have been doing tremendous jobs, but equally, the scouts who are never mentioned, they've been magnificent in the players that they've turned up. It took you nine years to get the first major honour what did that League Cup mean to Dundee United? When we won the, the League Cup, to me it was a terrific load lifted from my shoulders. And I remember seeing uh, Mr Robertson in the boardroom, who was uh, one of the older directors, who really in the early years before I became manager, he to me was one of the most important directors and out of his own business, I think, kept the club, club going and paying wages and so on. And his words to me that night was, uh, Jimmy says, I never thought I'd love to see the day. And that's the sort of, that's more than money to me, that sort of trivia. Did you feel from that win that you would go on to get the successes that followed? No, I've definitely, if I've got, well, I've many feelings, but one of the feelings I most certainly have is uh, the same or pessimist, but uh, I believe it's more a realist. And uh, provincial clubs cannot be any standards be expected to be in cup finals and winning cups on a regular basis when you think of the resources all the other clubs have got and in particular at that time they could buy your best players from you and uh, it was very very difficult and I've never ever promised anybody I've never even spent time thinking that it uh, would be great to do this or do that I was just thankful for the small mercies of uh, winning one and taking the pressure completely off everybody connected with the club and uh, it definitely is a feeling in, in my part. I should probably be far more uh, confident and outgoing, uh, having achieved that success and been hungry for more. That is most certainly a factor that uh, we're definitely hungry for more success and uh, we hope for that. But uh, I definitely don't ever uh, go out and tell people we're going to be doing this or doing that. We're just hopeful that at the end of the day we'll be good enough and get the breaks and the sh uh, share of luck in uh, winning trophies because provincial clubs need that wee bit more luck than uh, some of the uh, bigger clubs who, as I said earlier, have far better resources. The Premier League win must have been a tremendous occasion for you because at one stage during that season you looked as if the chance had gone. That was uh, the best achievement in all the time I've been manager. Uh, for us to win that was incredible and uh, in particular this season when I look back on the injuries we've had this season in particular the players that have been injured uh, it was unbelievable uh, the luck 
And people think that uh, they don't realise the amount of luck that is involved in, in, in any walk of life, I think, uh, for the right thing opening up at the right time. But in, in football, you, you need luck. And uh, uh, for instance, the Premier League was won, in my opinion, by 12 players. And I've said this before, and that just shows you how lucky we were to, uh, on the injury situation, to go through a season and most of the games uh, be only using around 12, uh, well there was 12 players played in most of the games or were involved in most of the games. And that, uh, this season now, we're well into the 20s uh, of first team players because of the injury situation we've had. So we had a lot of luck along the way, but uh, as I said earlier, provincial clubs need that wee bit more. At the end of the day, I honestly believe that season was very, very difficult to win the Premier League because Aberdeen had a magnificent squad at that time and the uh, Celtic had Charlie Nicholas and they definitely were at least as good as they are at the moment and uh, to beat uh, the Aberdeen side with the Strachans and people like that uh, it was very close in the end and uh, we just made it but uh, again a wee thing that happened that season when we went to Greenock the directors decided to uh, pay the buses uh, for to carry the supporters down there and uh, at Greenock we'd seldom won and we won for nothing that day because it was like a home game for us. But again, it was the directors that thought that one up and uh, it turned out well in the end. You've had tremendous success in Europe over the years, always doing extremely well in whatever tournament you've gone into. Why do you think Dundee United are so suited to European football? I think first and foremost it's uh, the way we play and the type of game that we play. If we played in Europe every week, I think we would be even more successful uh, because uh, our base uh, football all on uh, what you do with the ball uh, and try and keep it off the opposing team. And definitely when it comes to a crunch or a battle, we uh, can be found lacking in some aspects. But on uh, keeping possession of the ball and uh, building from the back and uh, still in the end of the day being able to penetrate with uh, people in recent years like Bolster or Eamon Bannon and Ralph Milne when he was playing exceptionally well for us. We were always capable of scoring uh, goals as well and uh, were very, very adept at uh, catching people on the break. And in Europe, people have looked at Dundee United and said, oops, uh, we'll beat them, no problem. And that has most certainly suited us. But basically, it's the type of game we play. And uh, I'm very, very influenced in recent years by the German and uh, the Dutch team. Uh, a few years ago, and uh, I think it's most certainly our style is well suited to Europe. What game do you think made you a team that people sat up and said they're going to be difficult to beat in Europe? Without doubt the Borussia game at uh, Tannadice when we'd lost 2 nothing over there, and again we'd actually did very well over there. It was only in the last uh, seven minutes I think we lost the two goals, both from corner kicks, and uh, Borussia came over here, a big club meeting uh, one of the smallest clubs in Europe, and uh, we beat them, I think, 5 nothing, And uh, it was a magnificent night at Tannadice. I actually smiled that night, but uh, <laughs> nobody will believe it when I tell them. But uh, that was the change. And uh, we actually received a, a letter from uh, Bobby Robson that day, uh, well, a few days after it. And he actually said, his, his words in his letter was, we can't even spell them, never mind spell their name, never mind beat them. And that shows you the length and breadth of the... Uh, success from having beaten uh, Borussia and everybody in Britain was uh, very pleased or most people in Britain were very pleased that us winning in the way we had won but to me I think that definitely gave the players a lot of confidence from the victory as well but people in Europe most certainly sat up and took notice. You went on then to, to reach the semi-finals of the European Cup beaten by Roma. How big a disappointment was that for you? Do I need to answer that one? <laughs> uh, did you feel you could have beaten them? Uh, I've got to be honest, uh, that again is the biggest flaw in my makeup. I was uh, apprehensive about the game, but I can assure you that never in all the time I've been manager did I outwardly approach a game with trying to con people into thinking that we could do it. I have never worked harder psychologically, and uh, deep down I was definitely apprehensive about it. and. Uh, at the end of the day, we managed to uh, get through the players at Tannadice when we won 2 nothing. They were magnificent in that uh, game, but uh, the small pitch suited us and it didn't suit them. 
but uh, in Rome it was uh, one of the biggest disappointments in uh, my life and uh, in particular what went on in Rome before and after the match but it's one part of the game that uh, uh, for the many many good years I've had in football I would rather remember the good times that is without doubt the worst experience I've ever had. One other big disappointment for you must be watching a team like Rangers attract the number of fans they do and with the success you have you still can't attract the fans. Uh, I feel very very jealous of uh, Rangers in that aspect in that aspect alone uh, when I became manager at Dundee United uh, I honestly believe that if we were able to rear a good team that the people would start coming back in numbers that would able, enable us to hang on to the players. Uh, that has happened only because the directors have been magnificent in the uh, financial management of the club and uh, their drive and ambition to be better has kept players at Tannadice. But uh, the amount of people that have come along and people wrongly accuse me of criticising the people that come along. I only criticise the people that we can't get along to the ground. And obviously there are financial restraints in Dundee and everywhere in the country. But uh, we are most certainly at the limit, in my opinion, at the moment. And it is really, really, really disappointing for me personally to think that uh, only about 6,000 people, 7,000 people uh, really care. Uh, about a football team in Dundee when you consider there's over 200,000. But I also think it's a big handicap having two teams in Dundee. I think that uh, if we were in a situation like Aberdeen here, that uh, we would have been far more successful than we have been. You're about to face the millionaires of Barcelona. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I personally am really looking forward to it. Uh, all the players I know are looking forward to it. But as usual, I'm not completely happy or contradictory. It definitely, uh, I wish the draw had been getting made a lot closer to uh, playing the game, because I think that players, you can't keep them concentrating on what's in hand. And uh, we've Scottish Cup ties and uh, hopefully staying in the Scottish Cup. And uh, also very important league games, fortunately in the position we're in in the league, that are absolutely just as vital as the European game. And it is difficult for the players to concentrate on the game in hand uh, because obviously the icing on the cake is the Barcelona game. And uh, I know that all the supporters are really looking forward to that match. But uh, I find it uh, very difficult even for myself to be concentrating on uh, the, like, say, the games that uh, uh, whatever comes up next. Gary Lineker to face? Yes. Uh, I think that uh, I'm going to try and get him in the office beside me and lock the door and keep him in there. But uh, it'll be interesting uh, seeing him. Uh, but uh, I still fancy the likes of Hegarty and Neri and Malpass and people like that can do the business against him. Uh, I really rate uh, some of the players we've got at Tannadice exceptionally high. Obviously, the boy Lineker's hit the headlines in the last month or two with the amount of goals he's scoring, but I'm sure uh, he's going to get a wee shock when he comes to play here. As I say, uh, we'll play it really tight and we'll uh, try and catch him on the break over there. And the names mean nothing to us. As I say, we'll just play our normal system and hopefully win the game over the two legs. Yeah, history could repeat itself. Um, in '66, uh, United did beat Barcelona, and uh, I'd like to think it could happen again. I think. Uh, overall, I think we're a better squad, and that's no disrespect to the squad of 66. But I think overall, I think we're a, a, a better side, especially playing in Europe. And it just so happens that we could maybe surprise Barcelona again. Yeah, well, we've played against big clubs before, and it's, it's never really affected us that much, I don't think. Um, I don't think we'll be overawed at, at Tannadice. If anywhere, it'll be over in the New Camp Stadium with 120,000 Spaniards shouting down your throat. Um, but we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it, really. I think we've got a great chance. Yeah, I don't think Barcelona will fancy coming and playing 
front of just 22,000. A small park compared to their park. And uh, we've proven over the years that at Tannadice very few teams beat us. Uh, and I think it's how we, depends how we play, uh, I'll determine how the, the tie goes. They're obviously the millionaires of European football. Does that overall you at all? No, money's nothing. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Our best wishes go to Dundee United.